Okay, so this is my latest update to KDE Plasma on the Raspberry Pi 5. Uh, this is my fifth version of this operating system. It's based on Raspberry Pi OS, but has a load of tweaks, a load of extra software. I'll go through some of that in a minute. But one of the new things is we now have Android running. So this is one Raspberry Pi running Linux at the top and Android at the bottom. And uh, I've even got the Google Play Store here as well. If I want to run some games, I've got Crossy Road running on here. Here we go, so we launch that, hit play, you can see that that's all working absolutely fine and looking great on this touch screen. So if I was to go to this screen, you can see the mouse and keyboard is working on this Elecro laptop. If I drag up to the top and hold at the top, you can see all the open apps. So I've got files open at the moment, I've got terminal open, I've got the browser open and I've got the discover store. So all of that is working really, really well. If I was to unplug this, it would basically send everything just to one screen. So this was actually being powered from the Elecro laptop, as is the Raspberry Pi. So I can take out, oh, that's the fan touching. Uh, I can take out this cable. I can take out this HDMI cable as well now. In fact, I could do this much, much neater. If I shut this down, this comes with a dock for Raspberry Pi 5. So this basically just plugs together. I've got a separate video on this lap dock. It is cool though. So that's on. This is a Raspberry Pi 5 16 gig and I haven't secured this down. That's why it hits the fan every now and then. I should have the little legs in there. You also plug this in to give mouse and keyboard control. So now I can pop that in here. And you can see how that's plugged in. Now I just power it on like you would a normal laptop and it starts up. But I'll switch over to screen capture so you can see it properly. So the username and password is still KDE and KDE. So let's just log in. As you can see, I've changed the login screen if you're used to the older version. So if we go straight into documents, we can have a look at all the changes. So I've got two readme files here. The KDE one is the one I'm gonna concentrate on first of all. I've applied all of the latest updates and also ran auto remove to get rid of some of the junk that didn't need to be there anymore. I've added WayDroid instructions in the document. So this build doesn't come with Android and I'll go through that in a minute, but uh, all the instructions are there and I've also made it easier to be able to install it as well. And I've tested it and it definitely works. So I've changed the Chromium icon, which is normally a blue icon, and I've changed it to the normal Chrome browser one because I just think it looks a bit nicer. I also changed the uh, start icon as well. If you want to change icons in this, all you do is right click and do configure application launcher, and then you can click on the icon and choose from a massive list uh, and basically change it that way. If you want to change an app, you can't right click and change it here on the shortcuts, but if you go to the application launcher, so say for instance I wanted to change Firefox, just right click on it and edit application and the same thing applies. So you can put whatever you want as an icon if you don't like the ones I've chosen. I got rid of Firefox from the bottom here and added Raspberry Pi Imager because I, I think Chrome works much better on a Raspberry Pi. I turned off show hidden files. So this is in the folders. So basically if we go into the main folder here, uh, I had hidden files on. And what it means is that whenever you go to your documents and your images, you've got all this junk in there and you don't generally need it. Only if you're sort of accessing some things that you don't normally have to access, but you can turn that on and off very, very quickly. So I added kernel equals kernel eight dot image into config dot text but I've hashed it out. So what that means, uh, and if we go down here, we can get to config.txt by copying this, because you can't normally make changes to config.txt unless you're using another operating system. So control alt T to open a terminal, we'll paste that in, and you can see kernel equals kernel eight dot image. Now, the way I've put it in the image, it'll have a hash. So if there's a hash, it basically means that is just ignored. Um, so I've got it deleted because I've got Android in here, but the version that you get will have it hashed out. So I, won't, I don't need to make any changes to that. I've enabled PSI equals one. So pressure stall information. This came up in a previous video about 
being able to install Android in Linux on a Raspberry Pi. Without this one thing, I couldn't get it to work. And I've just enabled it in command line because I haven't seen any negative or I haven't seen any performance issues. So I thought I'd just leave it already enabled. If you do want to get rid of it, you do the same as before. But instead of config.txt, it's command line.txt. So control alt T and paste that in. And you can see if you scroll all the way to the end, I've added PSI equals one. You can literally just delete that if you don't want it. As I say, I haven't seen any negative about it or anything affecting performance. I've changed the wallpaper and I've gone for a sort of Twister OS style. Uh, it's not the Twister OS wallpaper, but it's a similar color and I just like the look of it. I think it's like every time I use Twister OS, I really like the sort of style that it's got. I was going to add Conkey as well, which is something which is in Twister OS. Uh, and if I launch PyApps, which is one of the things that's very usefully installed into this operating system, if we do a search for Conkey Rings, again, I, I decided not to install this. I, I didn't want to go overload with installing everything because some people won't like it. And it's so easy to install with PyApps as I'm showing now. There you go. So that's shown up. It's not fully launched. There you go. Now it's launched. Having PyApps in here, have a look through and see if there are other things that you would want to install because it's so useful. There's all sorts in here. And I've also enabled PyKiss as well, uh, which also very similar, uh, allows you to install games, apps, tweaks, all sorts of things. Very, very useful. I removed Image Magic, which I think had a K on the end of it. Uh, it's spelled like that, um, because I so often press the Windows key and start typing Imager, and it, it used to pick Image Magic quite a lot, uh, and so I never use it, so I thought I'd get rid of it. There is still an Image Viewer on there, which I think, well, seems better to me, which is I have made Image Viewer, which, in fact, let's use that, because uh, if I go to my Pictures folder, all my wallpapers are in here, so I've got the new purple wallpapers, and I and I flipped one, so basically this is mirrored on two screens, so if you've got two screens side by side, uh, it's not just showing the same screen, it basically looks like a bit of a pattern. I think it looks a bit better. Uh, I've also put this Europe from space in there, well that's been in there from previous builds, because a lot of people have seen it in old videos and have asked about it. I've also got some AI wallpaper. Now I haven't changed any of these, so these are created with Microsoft Copilot on the iPad. They've changed the app now and there isn't a way of getting a 16 by nine image in the same sort of quality. So I'm gonna to have to look at another way of creating AI wallpapers, but I didn't use it as the default screen because I thought, again, the, the sort of pink purple screen is probably just a bit more standard rather than this being a bit over the top for some people. But if you wanna add them in, it's very, very easy to add any of these in. They're all created with AI. All you do is right click on the desktop configure desktop and wallpaper, and just pick the one you want and hit apply. You can also get wallpapers from the KDE store as well. This is one of the reasons I love KDE Plasma is because it's super customizable. I love the window snapping, uh, so the way you can go full screen or you know, in uh, one side or in one corner, it's just great. But also if you drag up and hold in the left top left hand corner, you can see all the open apps and you can switch straight back into the one you want. I've added a waste bin and a desktop icon to PC Man FM. Now, there's several file managers in here, and I put it that PC Man FM is on the desktop, so basically when you click on that, it comes up. But if you were to press the Windows key and start typing files, you'll see there's several in there, and you can choose to use any of the others if you want. One of the things that's not good about PC Man FM in this build is these icons don't show up. And I did have a look at it. I couldn't work out how to do it. There's obviously a way of doing it. Um, but I don't know if it's to do with the Windows icons that I use in this build. I really like the icons. I just think they look nice and modern and nice and bright. But you could swap to a different file manager. I like PC Man FM. It's the one that Raspberry Pi uses as standard. And it works brilliantly with my NAS drive. It just shows up and allows me to connect to my drive. And I've also got another one here with YouTube backups as well. So yeah, it's, it's just super handy. 
and this download so this is available to download through google drive i'll put a link in the description i've used xz compression and compressed it a bit more so it's actually a lot smaller than the previous standard it's still something like 4.8 gig but it's smaller but if you go heavily smaller then it means it takes a lot longer to write uh, and raspberry pi imager uses xz compression so it it can basically un you don't need to unzip it before you you write the image and if you want to know about previous versions um, so i put in there for compute module 4 if you want to write an image to it it's already set up for that i've also added all of these apps there's Sysbench if you want to do a benchmark test on there, you can just copy that into Terminal and all the overclocking settings I mentioned before. This history-c at at history-w, it basically gets rid of all the terminal history. So if you go to Terminal and you press up, you can see the previous commands that you've put in. And rather than there be or any mistakes I've made or just, just to keep it tidier, I just delete all of that. So for the Android bit, I've put instructions in the documents folder, so install Android WayDroid. And what I'll do is I'll shut this down and I'll boot up with one that doesn't have Android in it. Because if I start typing WayDroid here, you can see that I can launch straight into it. And I did actually put in the documents how to stop WayDroid. So you can put this into terminal to stop it, otherwise it keeps running. So if we go to terminal, and paste that in, Waydroid session stop, there you go. So let's shut this down and boot up from another one that I've used that doesn't have Android in it yet. By the way, I have a whole playlist on this build of KDE Plasma. If you don't want to download mine and you want to experiment with creating your own system and customizing and things like that, have a look at that playlist. It takes you through all the steps but if you want the easy option, then you can just download my latest build and use that. So if we open up Documents and install Android WayDroid, we can close this down and open a terminal. First thing you're gonna do is update. So just copy this first line and paste it in. It probably won't need anything. Yeah, it's all updated. Uh, and then make that change to config.txt so copy and paste and where it says kernel 8 you're getting rid of the hash so you're enabling it press ctrl x yes and enter or y and enter then we need to install it so just copy this line in then we can launch waydroid so if i press the windows key start typing waydroid and hit enter and this is the bit where it asks you what you want to download. So if you do the vanilla one, there'll be no Google services in there at all. But if you do want the Google Play Store, pick that one. I'll pick this one because there's more steps to it. So let's hit download. Sometimes this takes a while, sometimes it's super quick. So this is basically downloading the build of Android. Okay, so that's finished. Let's hit done and then restart. So type in reboot in terminal. After you've restarted, Launch WayDroid, so press the Windows key, type out Way, and hit Enter, and it starts up. So we'll wait for it to start up, and then hit the terminal. And also let's get this document back up. So then we need to go sudo WayDroid shell. Let's paste that in. And then we need to do this really long line, so make sure you get all of it. Copy that in. And this will tell you your Android ID. So hit enter, and it's come up with a really long number, which is your Android ID. So you need to copy that. And if we drag this back over, we can see there's a website here. So copy this, this is to register. So launch the browser and copy that link in. And then you need to sign into your Google account. I've got two-factor authentication, so mine will ask me an extra step. So I've got to put this number in on my second device. So yes, it's me, and number 13. And you can see that's picked that up already. So we need that number. So if we go back to terminal, copy that number, and paste it in. Click on I'm not a robot, and then register and it'll add it to the bottom of this long line. 
And that's pretty much all you need to do. It's hard to know how long it takes to work, but it doesn't tend to work straight away. So if I click on the Play Store now and try and sign in, okay, well that might have worked but straight away. Sometimes it definitely takes a lot longer. It's like it has worked. So I'm not going to bother backing up device data. Let's hit accept. Yeah, so as simple as that, I now have the Play Store. And if you have a look at my other KDE video, you'll see how well San Andreas ran on it. It, uh, it does seem to perform pretty much as well as standard Android on the Raspberry Pi, which is amazing. I really wouldn't have thought it was going to run as well as this. And it also doesn't seem to use loads of RAM either. So if I do HTOP, so we're using 1.83. I'm on an 8 gig Pi 5 now. It's not even maxing out a 4 gig Pi. If I open Chromium, and let's just do a search. Let's go with Hot UK Deals. Then we can go back to HTOP. So oh no, let's launch the page and then go to back to HTOP. And yeah, 2.21 gig out of 8 gig. So it really doesn't need loads at all. I mean, obviously, it would depend on what games you're, you're running or software. I did try LumiFusion, which is the editing software, but I still don't get any image on it. Anything I've tried on the Pi, this is the editing app I use on iPad. And yeah, so I paid for it, um, but I can't get it to run on anything. Okay, so I hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.